You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Hold on. Wait. Did Tracy tell you what time doors are? No, but I know. It is 7.30. Well, the show's 8.30. I talked yeah. to Becker. Well. Matt Becker. Yes. Yeah, I know. But I confirmed that. So we can just figure backwards from there when we want to get there. Tracy's going to leave at about oh. 7. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're going by yourself? Are you driving? Or how Kenny's you driving her. Kenny's and driving back? Yes. What time are you guys no. going? I missed that. Sorry. She's working. She's got to help him. I just want to make sure that there's somebody there for the door. Okay. All right. But if, uh, yeah, four, seven, six, eight, nine. Gump, you're in the way back. We'll do. Oh, we could have, we, we can have uh, Catherine, Katie. Oh, I can ride with, I can ride with Fury too. Fury Sounds too. like a plan. Katie, so Katie with an IE. <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur. No, I had my intern. I said, skim through this, see what you find here. You know, I, I, I like the way she gets really upset at minor things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good review. Ooh, your pirates. Are we going? We're going. Full house. Yeah, five mics. Five mics. We need more. All right. Well, we're just starting right now with uh, Chad and Bingo and uh, Chaley. Just... Uh, recent shit because we opened chuckleheads comedy club uh the grand opening was uh last thursday i, I don't know if we have any uh, good stories about it i just wanted to mention that chuckleheads is up and running and uh we had a blast we had a bunch of tucson comics come down josiah and tony uh i, I uh bruin that's his last name Bruin. joey Bruin. yeah <clears throat> and the other guy no, I don't- tony Tony. Joey is, that's how I fuck him up. Joey is Mamou's. That's right. Comic. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other gal, I didn't really talk to her. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, Rebecca Tingley. Yeah. I love her a yeah. lot. Yeah. That's good. And, uh, and then there was that one guy, I forget his name now. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul Plum? Plum. Yeah. Yes. Was it's it Paul? Paul? No, it's Plum. I know but it's no, Paul. It's not. It's definitely Plum. Well, it's definitely Paul. Right. I didn't even know his Paul last Plum. fucking tag team and drunk. It was very funny because nice. he was sitting in the green room, and I go, all right, we got a fucking full show, and he's in the green room, and he says hi to me, and I say hi like I know him because I, a million people I forgot. And he, then I found out he's doing time, and I'm like, uh, you're on the show? Because we had a fucking already full lineup. and uh, Oh, and Mamu was going up, too. She yep. went up. And then uh, when he left to take a piss, I asked Becky, I go, is that guy on the show? He said he went through- Matt Becker's wife, Becky, yeah. co-owner of the yeah. club. Yeah. He said he went through Becker to get on the show. And she goes, well, let me go ask. And then she came back and said, nope. So we thought, oh, this guy's got some fucking balls. Which we've run into that on tour before. Yeah, but I mean, that guy was very calm and- Almost like he was telling the truth. Yeah. We're talking, <laughs> are we talking about different people? No, he's the guy that, and he came back in. And and it's I, not Paul. Paul right. came with Tucson oh. people. Oh yeah, no. So oh no, no. Plum that's was. yeah, no. That's with Paul. That's Rebecca Tingley's comic. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, he was, wasn't on the here's bill. The, here's the list. Doug opened the show. There were Christine Levine, Brian Plum, Tony uh, Brune, Josiah Osego, 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 Osego. Uh, Re- Rebecca Tingley. Is there an S on there? I don't, it was written with no S. I, oh, I, know, I never talked to her, so I didn't really meet her. And then, and then you did. You're, you're yeah, but sad. we thought this guy, he's full of shit. So when he comes back on, uh, we go, yeah, you, you, you're not going up tonight. And he said, but I'm on the list. And Mamu goes, you want want to watch me cross your name off the list? Because at that point, we thought he's just <laughs> bullshitting his way onto this stage, if not just the green room. And then he goes, uh, I'm sorry, I... I got an email from Becker. I can show you. And he sh- showed the email. All right, you're back on. Sorry to make you feel like an absolute fucking outcast. <laughs> but- <laughs> Before that last uh, exchange happened, Becky said, you know what? I'll take care of it. I'm going to go tell him there's he doesn't have time tonight. And so she went out in the audience 
found the guy with his friends, talked to him and said, Hey, probably humiliated him he in goes, front of his friends. Because I, uh, I know you, I know you, uh, expected your time tonight, but, uh, there's, we don't really have room for it. He goes, Oh, that's all right. That's cool. And then Brian Plum comes back. She didn't talk. She told some stranger, Hey, you can't do time tonight. And he goes, that's fine. <laughs> he paid to get in. <laughs> <laughs> so then Brian Plum, goes, Becky, here's Brian. She goes, that who? <laughs> I go, is this the guy you told that wasn't doing time? She goes, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and it's a guy who uh, was wearing the Shaley Cannibal t shirt. He's right. been to like four oh, yeah, shows. I know, yeah, I know who you're talking and about. He's, and I'm like, you, when we were talking to him later, I was kind of busting his nuts. I go, but like, you, you like said, okay, that like, I signed up. I one time I was on the radio. I'm, I'm down here. And you're like, oh, that's all right. It's like you didn't put any fight against it, <laughs> which made me think the guy was lying when we thought it was another dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy came uh, from Boston, the, the Brian Plum. He's, yeah, he's a Boston. Boston he's originally guy. from Boston. Well, that sounds confusing. <laughs> well, tonight that was all uh, all Tucson comics for the most part last time, but tonight is uh, almost all Bisbee comics, including Chad Shank, who almost didn't make it here tonight. So now. <laughs> what happened? I had a minor. I, did, I was just almost a little bit late. Uh, well, maybe I probably wouldn't have been here. I pulled up on my motorcycle to get gas, and all of the gas pumps had people at them already, so I had to get in line. So it was a car that was already there, and I was like, I'll get behind that one. This probably won't take that long. Right after I parked behind this guy, uh, he notices his friend over at another gas pump and just leaves and goes over there, and he's talking to his friend, and I'm like, Oh, you're not going to fucking just sit here. So pretty soon he goes, click, click, it's fucking done. He's all full of gas. He's just still sitting there talking. Why are you motherfuckers? Hey, I think you're done over here, sir. And he's, oh, yeah. And I, yeah, I heard it click. I go, you know, he goes, oh, okay. And he looks at me, walks past. He goes over, puts the gas thing away, puts the gas cap back on, walks back ah. across the ah. fucking ah. aisle and starts talking to his friend again. So I was like, and the one on the opposite side of him was out of order. So I couldn't go to that. But I was like, you motherfucker. So I just hauled my bike back and just zipped around the corner to that one. And I was going to string the the a pump around to the other side. Across his windshield. <laughs> so, uh, but as I fucking peeled out across the thing, I said, thanks a lot, asshole. And I fucking pull over there. And I was only about two feet from him. So I didn't need to say it that loud. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'm over there trying to get my thing to work, and now I'm standing right where he has to get in on his vehicle as I'm trying to put my card in the thing. And then I get nervous because he comes walking up, and he goes, I didn't know I had a time limit. And I go, you can see that there's a fucking line on every one, man. I go, don't me that shit. And I just said, fuck it, I'm just going to walk away, and I'll just get another gas pump because now I'm blocking his door. So I walk back around, and he comes I don't appreciate being called an asshole. I go, well, I don't fucking appreciate you being an asshole. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he, I, he didn't seem aggressive. He was just talking shit. So I wasn't like, we weren't about to fight. So I was, you know, whatever. As far as he knew. I, well, and, and I liked the fact that he didn't like that I called him an asshole. Because then I think, I don't give a fuck. Fuck wad. I think I called him fuck wad. <laughs> and, uh, and then he's, uh, he was getting in his car at that point and I saw a, another one had opened up about the same time as he was sitting in his car. So, and he's like, listen, homie. And I said, I'm not your homie, bitch. And I fuck it was cause I'm trying to sell like, oh, Which one's going to antagonize, antagonize you into fighting me? So I pull around to the gas station, to the other gas pump and I started putting gas in and, uh, he pulled around over and parked behind me. So uh, I was like, oh, okay. So I turned around and looked at him. Like, you know, His car's got really the, shitty mileage. It's a, Suzuki, <laughs> it's a Suzuki Swift. Probably had great mileage. <laughs> I was saying if we needed gas again. Well, he, he didn't pull in behind me, pulled in sideways behind me and was just staring at me. So I was, you know, like, oh, I'm right here. For, you know, we can't fight with you in the car. And then he puts the window down and says either uh, I'll get you later or I'll see you later. Or uh, something about later, and which is so, 
That's why I was late because I hurried up and finished putting gas and I hauled ass to chase him so that we could meet up later. I sooner. mean, sooner, <laughs> sooner, than later. sooner than later because uh, he doesn't know I'm not out a lot, so he's probably not going to see me later. So <laughs> let's fucking get this done. Courtesy meetup. But I, I, I lost him. I didn't, I didn't find him. So I headed on over here. You know, I had that same thing happen once. It was just the one thing, that first thing that you said. And everything else happened in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a thanks, asshole. And then I avoided oh. eye contact for the rest of the time. Oh, no, sir. Uh, there's no time limit. Take care of that with me. Oh. <laughs> no, that's, can I? I'll pull it around for you. I was kind of. Watch your window. I was kind of excited because he was a big dude. Because usually if it's like a little dude, then it's not, you know, fun. You feel like a bully. And I like, this would be good. This would be fun. A little adrenaline? A little bit. Yeah? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've, I've scattered notes here, but uh, last night, evidently, uh, I guess I was asking you if uh, if we were if you were away. What, you don't want to talk about this You now? don't remember talking to me last night? Yeah, I remember, but okay. I don't remember I, I, how it came up. I think it was the fact that I think you were on the road. We were not podcasting that time where... I was tweeting about it where I, I sharded watching Netflix in the morning <laughs> and I was uh, so hung over. I just, just sat there with it. And then I, I, it was two okay. or three days before I finally uh, showered. Be- I, think I think that was before we left. I think that was before we left. Tracy, didn't that happen before we left? Tracy Rolodexes all the poop stories. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I, that, maybe that's what, because we had the diarrhea podcast, and I couldn't remember if that oh, was yeah, part yeah. of it. No. But then you said, well, I don't know if I've told my uh, my uh, sizzler oh my shrimp story. <laughs> and diarrhea is always funny. Yeah. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> We're so- south of Og- Ogden, just just a little bit north of Salt Lake City. And we do that thing where you drive and drive and drive and drive and you don't fucking with, with your cell phones and stuff. You just get a hotel room. When you get close, you do Expedia, see what's nearby, whatever. And I go, Oh, look, there's a sizzler. And I can't remember the last time I ate at a sizzler. I go, well, this back. Now you can. Yeah. I'll never forget it. <laughs> this backwater town. This is probably, you know, fancy, right? I, I said South Ogden, right? <laughs> so we go in there and you know, when you look at something on the, that salad bar, and you're like, like that uh, tipping point, Malcolm Gladwell or whatever. We're like, your instincts were probably right. That's primitive man saying, that lettuce looks too shiny to be good. But I said, hey, Mr. Sophisticated Modern Man goes, oh, this stuff's fresh. It's at the Sizzler. <laughs> There's rules for Christ's sake. We Tracy and I shared. I got shrimp, and it was Doug, your favorite, the the flayed butterfly sh- shrimp yep. with the soaked in grease and, and dipped in batter and all. Oh that yeah, shit. yeah. Oh, I would have given you the whole thing gladly, but it, it came to the table. And I, go, I really just wanted the salad. I just got the entree, whatever. But Tracy and I traded everything except the iceberg lettuce, and within three hours, I was like pacing, watery mouth, like I just did a shot of tequila or something. And I'm like, I don't know, Trace. I don't know. I don't know. I started doing back. I like look back. Like when was the last meal? Taco Bell. Eight hours ago. No way. I'm going. It's fucking. I. I don't know if I'm gonna get sick. And then it fucking just. I was vomiting so violently for four days. I was taking ibuprofen because my rib cage hurt. Ow. And then. It, the other end started happening. I was like a blow dart, you know, <laughs> blowing out with this end and this end's going, hold on now. You're loaded back here. <laughs> and then something happened that I couldn't find the term on, uh, online. But you know when you drop a stone or a pebble into uh, like a still water? That force, that fluid dynamic of that stone going down actually creates an upwards force and that little that perfect sphere comes back up. Yep. Right into my mouth more than three times while I was vomiting into the toilet. Oh. I don't know what that's called. I wish I had the, I wish I had the term, but we all know what it is and it is fucking. But after the second time, I said, I don't, it's coming out later anyway. It's not like I, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, oh, but it's so gross. Yeah, that happened till five in the morning. I already so from, got E. coli. <laughs> fuck that. I don't care. It was from, from midnight, uh, 1224 to, uh, Almost five o'clock in the morning that I was up, just throwing up and 
I've I've never had to uh, cancel a show for illness, and I would love to have that test my metal. Where I think I, if I was vomiting and violently shitting, yeah, I think I'd continue to do the show just for this story. <laughs> and that would be the one time I would tell people, don't have to keep your cameras in your pockets. <laughs> Go ahead and film this one. <laughs> I can't walk my audience with my material anymore. Like when they're, you're pest- too too calloused. But <laughs> I think if I had a bucket on each end and a microphone in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a squid inking. <laughs> Sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, the only problem is the, is a uh, violent uh, stomach cramps. Like if you're squid doing squid inking, sorry, <laughs> it, the stomach cramps I think would uh, throw you off your timing. That that when you dump, you know like, when you have it. So, I don't know if everyone, you know it, when it's the cramping is so bad, it's because your body's throwing everything out yeah. of every hole. Yeah, I think that would be the your the flaw to your uh, your your diarrhea show. <laughs> I, I had one of those when we had to drive to the airport the next day, and I go, if this keeps going, I, you always feel like you're done after the last one. You feel good. You get that cold sweat afterwards, and you go, I think maybe it's over. Yeah. And at that time, I, 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 it better be because I have to drive. <laughs> I, even in that kind of condition, I'm not letting bingo drive. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I had some uh, – uh, it was the first time I ever had it, mushrooms that were ground down into powder yep. and then mixed into a chocolate bar. Yep. So, so you just eat a chocolate bar of mushrooms. I never had that. That was fantastic. The problem was is that inside of my toilet looked like somebody had a chocolate shotgun <laughs> shooting the <laughs> shit out of that. Hey, I'm trying to clean at angles. I had to lay down to see. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it. All right, All right. we, we, we got to give a, a, a shout out. Speaking of diarrhea, let's give a, a special shout out to our uh, our good friend Chris Bodie, who's a, 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 a jazz trumpeter, Grammy award winning. He uh, you probably heard me bitch about him a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> he came to he, he uh, came to both Los Angeles shows and one of the New York shows and bought like 20 tickets to each show. He had spent thousands of dollars to bring his, all his friends and his, his full band, band yeah. to, to shows. And I'm like, it's the same show every night. You, you can't just come to three shows in a row. No, but you're like, he, the, 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 the praise he heaps on me is, you go, all right. Yeah. But when you see it a second time, you're going to go, Oh, he says the same shit every night. I'm the Miles Davis of comedy. Like, no, I'm not. I'm a guy who gets drunk and I yell the same shit every night. And if I if I do something different, it's because I couldn't remember what I did last night. <laughs> it was a mistake. Yes. <laughs> you know, the, the yeah, that's the jazz part of it. That's the improvisational jazz. Uh, What's interesting is is when we see that on a will call list for the night because we usually work the door, and we see Chris Bodie. Plus nineteen, that's a problem seating. Night, that's a fucking problem at any club to seat nineteen people because they want to sit together. Or you now you've got to put like you've got all this and who knows yeah, nineteen? He bought nineteen tickets not knowing if nineteen other people were going to show up. We've so, had that happen too. Yeah. Where I, I bought t- tickets for all my friends and none of them want to go. <laughs> Yeah, you should have had him watch a couple YouTube clips first, huh? <laughs> but uh, he's a, a fantastic guy, and uh, so he was playing Tucson, and we saw Chris Bodie, Desert Diamond Casino. Fabulous oh, They don't show. say, by the way, there's three different ones, so before you book your hotel, <laughs> we booked the Desert Diamond Hotel Casino. He was at one in a different oh, fucking no. town. and It was a shuttle away. Yeah, it was a... Sh- 20-minute shuttle that doesn't yeah. run if you're getting fucked up with Chris Bodie after the show. <laughs> right. it, it ends at some point. And then, uh, well, obviously, we want to sit in the back. And they get us uh, all-access badges and tickets. And so we wait till the last possible minute. I'm out smoking until I know, okay, show's starting and the guy's doing the announcements. And I said, hey, we just want to sit right back here. There's some empty rows in the back. And, oh, we can't change seats at this hour. And I'm like, but no one's here. Is a, can I just stand here? 
I have mean, no, you know, just one of the fucking rule followers. You, you can't use any kind of, you know. Uh, and you forgot reason. about the backstage passes, which well, you might have been able to use. Yeah, that's <laughs> thanks for paying off my story. In oh, the middle of it. <laughs> you want me to Keep cut this part? Uh, you want me to cut <laughs> no, yeah, no, cut that's it, cut no, it. no. The problem is, <laughs> by the time I'm done arguing and I, I, I'm gonna have to sit in my assigned fucking seat. The show has started, and to get to our seats, the usher has to take us in front of the stage. They've just started the show, and here's and of course, Bingo's dressed in this giant fucking ridiculous orange and blue wide-brimmed fucking Kentucky Derby hat. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're not small figures. <laughs> and, and into the middle row, which we're halfway down and dead ends. So now I'm probably oh, that's the worst. five tall go cup uh, vodka sodas in. So I get a bladder full, and I'm the only way to get back out is to either go down the row, ow, ow, excuse me, ow, or go around the fucking front. So which I'm just nursing happening. my drink. <laughs> then I grabbed hers, which she, I noticed she's not drinking, and I'm. Poured hers into mine. I was mine. attention. I'm nursing that drink. Yeah, it was a it was a, a great show. And you know, I'm not a big music guy, but yeah, but stand up was all whispering, um, perfect pitch and circular breathing uh, yeah, how yeah, tos yeah. in my ear. <laughs> Super. I go uh, the fucking uh, bass player uh, Reggie was his name, uh -huh. and he came up and he's playing bass with his bass guitar and his mouth at the same time doing like it perfectly and i said he learned this from my vhs how-to series <laughs> called perfect pitch you were driving uh, me fucking crazy <laughs> so at some point he stops the show and says uh i'll get to the band later but i have to uh mention someone that's in the audience tonight and it's the closest i've ever become come to being a stalker and he's the greatest comedian in the world <laughs> and just went on and then they put the lights up and i, I gave up. a wave because this is my perfect opportunity to sneak out and take a piss and have a cigarette hey thank you thank you and i still went the aisle way and stepped on some old lady's feet sorry uh, <laughs> but at least i had street cred at that I, point I, I, pictured you, I pictured you stealing the spotlight and making them spotlight you while you walked in front of the stage <laughs> waving the whole time i'm over here hello hello, hello can you not see me <laughs> yeah, it was not it was like, like that time when uh, we went to the Manson show and Andy and I opened it as the uh, fake radio station that's promoting the show and to bring them up. Yeah. And then we fucked with the audience really hard and dropped in corporate commercials till they booed us off stage and uh, jazz trumpet crowds. Not that uh, pliable. <laughs> There's a lot of walkers. There's a, <laughs> a lot of. Yeah, very stiff. So I, I only took advantage. And then to get back in, I'm like, ah, fuck. I'm just going to watch it from back here now. It's probably only half an hour left. I can stand in the back. And uh, then he came off stage to do a fucking trumpet number for someone in the audience. I go, oh, now I got the fucking diversion. And I snuck around him as he's playing to this lady. I go, thanks for giving me a chance to piss. Uh and it was fun. We we drank the rest of the night away. He's fabulous, people. I just bought uh, a couple of his albums. Great. I go, yeah, this is shit I can listen to. This oh, is shit I can write to. Cause, yeah, yeah. Ex yeah, except for that fucking opera singer. <laughs> Carry <laughs> I get, on. I get, <laughs> Move the on. opera guy came on towards the end. He had a few vocalists. They were great. But the opera guy came on. And I'm giving Bingo the, the fucking, opera guy. let's speed that. it up here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the opera the <laughs> opera guy. <laughs> Fuck, are we at 20? Because I, I thought yeah, we'd race the through this stuff. Well, well, we have guests. We have two fucking great guests. So let's. You did do say something about the road manager, Chris. Peter. Oh yeah, that's you in my notes. That's you called right. me at one a.m. Yes. to tell me this story and said because I didn't even know you left. So it's one a.m. <laughs> and you were just hey, I'm just calling you to check in, but I want you to remind me of this, so I'm reminding you. Yes, uh, <laughs> the tour manager for all the shit I give Chaley, and I know the tour manager is listening right now, as is Chris because he knows we're going to talk about him. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Chris came out and met us. Uh, he's like, where are you? I go, we're in the casino wandering towards the showroom. And by the time we were close to the showroom, he's out there. This is a fucking hour before the show. I, I would never go out an hour. And this is a fucking like 2,500 seater. I'm scared to go out around my fans at fucking, you know, when it's a hundred seater. <laughs> but he has different fans. <laughs> But he came oh, out. I think there's some similarities. Street clothes introduced us to the whole band in the back. Oh, fucking that uh, Cassie. Uh, she's been here before. You'd, I'd, you'd have to see her to know her. She's been down here for, I don't know who she knew, but she came and I have her in my phone as Cassie Tucson Cool. Cause some people, yeah, about. some people you put in your phone. I know, I know exactly yeah, what you're talking about. She's fat. <laughs> She's backstage. I don't even know why. And she lit up. She said, saw Bingo. Bingo. Oh, my yeah. God. I think she's like a piano tuner or something. Uh, she's down. so sweet. Yeah. She was. But I thought maybe she's someone that, because he says, oh, the, all the band are fans of you. And he makes them listen to shit. <laughs> well, no. He listens and they have to. Listen. Yeah, they have yeah. to. But they were all at the, a lot of them were at the LA show and quoting bits back to me as cool yeah. as fuck. And, uh, and she's there. And then on her way out, oh, so, so you're leaving? Yeah, my friends are doing a show in town. And then I got, fuck. Oh, I, I know you. And then we figured it out. That uh, it was her. That was cool. I don't know what the point of that was, but but um, that was cool. One road of the band yeah, members started doing one of your bits on stage. Oh, at the close, I left for the before the encore. Another uh -huh. chance to get out and get to the pisser before old people with bad prostates and have a cigarette. But yeah, they 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 quoted a bit at the very end of the show. It's very it, it was yeah a lot of ego right here. Uh, that yeah, was a big ego night for me, but it was fun. Well, we're going somewhere. The, okay. The oh, the road tour manager. That's where we were. He said, uh, uh, do you want to go to a bar, Chris, uh, and get some drinks or do you just want to come to the green room and have, uh, drinks back there? I go, fuck yeah, we'll do that. Cause I know what d green room drinking is like. Hmm. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> the tour manager says, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm busting your balls on this, sir, but next time you go on tour with Chaley, <laughs> there is a full bar in the fucking green room. He went and got us two drinks, one for me and one for Chris. <laughs> two of his band members came out, saw Chris having a cocktail before the show. What is that? What's in that? You're having a drink now? Can I, can I have a sip? They're passing this fucking... <laughs> Plastic yeah. cup of fucking vodka soda around like they're fucking teenagers behind <laughs> Tatnik school. <laughs> it's 11 a.m. drinking and one person orders a Bloody Mary and no one else orders until that one's done. And they go, oh, I want one of those too. And it just goes to every day regular on the fucking bar. And they have to stop what they're doing 16 times to make those drinks. So instead of them having a bottle and mixers backstage... He went to get one. That, it was yeah. early enough that we go, oh, we're going to go hit the bar and we'll see you after the show. You got to get ready. And then we hit the buffet where for $22, Bingo had a plate of salad and then a bowl of bacon bits because that's all she could eat on a keto diet. <laughs> and uh, you're really going to charge us like $22 for yep. her. She just, yep. And then we started <laughs> pounding drinks. It's, it's did I you make sure money. you got a $22 pile of lettuce and bacon bits and then just eat what you can and make them throw the rest in the garbage? She wasn't complaining. She goes, no, the bacon bits, they're real bacon bits. They're, it's real bacon, so it's not bad. Real bacon bits. <laughs> well, hmm. bacos are soy products. It's oxymoron, right? Anyway, well, after the show, as 1,600 people are leaving, he's like, well, do you want to go to a bar? And it's in a casino on a Saturday night. And yeah, I, I want to go to a bar. And Chaley would have had a fucking seat, seating arrangement stuck away from people. And no, he just walks out into the crowd and, of course, <laughs> gets bum rushed by people, which I started. I go, let's crash their photo. And like, oh, my God, Chris Bode. And then everyone wants a fucking picture. But they all follow him to the only bar that's open that. We're sitting in and a million people one after another. And then finally the tour manager comes back with the two, posters and shit drinks. that you know, he has to bring with him. Like you don't have a fucking quiet place. You're selling out a fucking theater here. They don't have something set up for you. Chaley woulda. 
I think I busted his balls in front of him. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Oh well, you know how to get in touch with me. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because uh, casinos are notorious for hiring people. They don't give a shit. They don't even care if there were bodies in the room. They we've done. Remember, we did a with uh, we did a up in the Pacific Northwest. We did a gig, and it was really there was no one in there. It was oh, what's that guy's name? Andy or something? Andrew Norelli was the opener. All right, and you guys had the. It was the first time I went to see a, a comedy show in a casino. I'm like, oh, this will be packed. They, they got all these people playing. Playing games, they'll go oh, in there. Wait, is that the one Trinka showed up at? That was in like kind of the middle of nowhere. And it was in the middle of nowhere. All yeah. right, but it, it turned into this thing where like, there's no one in here. They don't give a fuck. They're just plinking, you know, their coins. Or back then it was their coins, and it was just one of those things like, oh, they don't care. They just have a budget that they want something that someone's got nothing to do to wander in and then leave. It's really tantamount to someone going hey let's go to this thing where are we going i don't know it's just some comedy who is it i don't know let's just go that's the that's the comedy yeah it was completely unknown back then I but was, now you lived in washington then i mean now it's different a little bit in that they are starting to book things like 80s revival shows and stuff like that and that thing you go to they have that stuff all the time with, with cover bands playing and shit the, the indian casinos you're right though that's they have like because in in globe they had one out of san carlos and yeah. i think that's and I, i'm trying to remember but it, it was like eddie money or something and i'm like fucking eddie money and we went out there and was, i was embarrassed i was they like really, i'm gonna go I'm they don't care if it, if it packs out or not they just know people will show up and then maybe mill through and play a couple games oh. right or if they don't eh, it's a cost of doing business at a casino oh. Uh, all right, let's uh, thank break. you, Chris yeah. Bodie. Thank you, Chris Bodie, and your tour manager who did give us all the the best seats in the house. If you don't want to leave every fifteen minutes for a piss and a cigarette, uh, and <laughs> thanks for the shout out, uh, and thanks for the all access pass that I realized too late that fucking cunt who wouldn't let me stay in the back, I could have just pulled out that all access pass and go, see what that says? I'm going to access this back row fucking seat. <laughs> you non-smiling fucking iceberg. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back. We have guests and we're excited. Click. Please hold. Cocktails. Hey, people, when you're uh, finished jacking off to Chad Shank's voice and you go, there's got to be something even more hardcore. <laughs> Try Red Tube, not to be confused with Red Box, who I just excoriated on my last podcast or this podcast. I don't know when this goes in. Uh, so go to Red Tube and uh, type in your favorite fetish. And uh, once you're done beating off to all of that, Find there's uh they're, they're all con connected, porn hub, hub tube. I don't know, porn tube, you porn. Once I switched from you porn to red tube, it was no going back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm I'm still a red tube guy. Big fan, big fan, big fan, big fan. I didn't know. Oh, uh, uh, your world's about to change, sir. <laughs> I uh I at one point uh, I don't know how you put videos up there. I think I, I was trying to. Submit to the I was trying to get my fans to put my clips up under different fetish names, but I, I should have learned my lesson when I did Girls Gone Wild and I thought it would be funny. You're just gonna make people really fucking hate you. It seems like a like a like in an anger a, thing. A crank fueled pound session. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's you doing a fisting joke. You, you like fisting? Here's a bit. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Anyway, RedTube. Watch uh, RedTube, and uh, they have new videos daily. But uh, a lot of times I find myself beaten off to that same old favorite, the classics. You go, I'm going to go, I'm going to jerk off to, I remember that. The Red Badge of Humiliation hand job lady. Yeah, I'm going to come back to you. And no, I could never satisfy you with that dick that small. Thanks for the cock ring. RedTube, brought to you by the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Not affiliated with the color red or tubes. <laughs> or red box. All right, our two guests today are a good old friend, Kristen Becker, comedian, 
uh, from God knows, I don't even remember where we met. Uh, Buffalo originally. Yeah, the, yeah. The yeah, yeah Nietzsche's, yeah, the first time. But yeah, we were sharing stories. I go, she, I don't know. She was at that fucking horrible gig. We were telling this story. You're, okay. <laughs> now, when you say horrible. Wait, wait. I, you're going to know the end. I know, I know. Shreveport. I believe it was a last minute booking. One of those Brian Hennigan oh, hasn't the booked the whole fan tour. That no one could turn off above the stage. There was like a hurricane may or may not be coming in. We stayed at a casino, but there was an actor there from some series that oh, yeah. filmed there. And I can't remember his name. You can't remember his name because we went to the casino at 1 p.m. and drank until, like, we were late no, to no, the show. No, no, this was a after, after hours. We, oh, uh, no, after no, the no, show. first. No, first. We started oh, at you, the casino. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and that because we were late. Because there was a chance that the gig was going to be canceled is what I think I remember. Well, what you said was, it's Shreveport, let's get fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. I mean, it might have been the hurricane, but. <laughs> Full stop. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Now we had sold shit for tickets as a last minute you know, hey, we have the night off. Why not book something? Maybe even one of those, like, hey, if anyone knows a gig, we have the night off in Shreveport next week. It, yeah, it was uh, it was a weird town. Too. It was the worst yeah, gig yeah. ever. Oh, like, you well, couldn't hear. It was the, a club. It was it a wasn't dance a comedy club. club. It was a dance club with like fucking bean bags, kind of like Medford Falls. We're like, did you guys eat? like? This isn't cool to be on a couch. Watching comedy. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is the reading. place that you would find in the back of a giant dance club where you might be able to finger a girl in the dark or do some blow. Or a boy. That's but not- no one usually <laughs> sits there. But they decided, oh, we could do comedy there, and there's a football field beside you with no one in it of a dance floor. <laughs> the worst sound, like you know, uh, titty bar DJ. Hey, coming up to the stage now, don't you know? And we went out afterwards with that actor guy and his posse. She remembered more of the story than I did. But I remembered that part because one guy tried to say that I was full of shit, that I was like, I was trying to crash their table because he's a an actor and he was over getting drinks. I go, no, that's not true at all. He goes, yeah, well, fucking how do you know him then? I go, However, it went. I said, "Okay, you're wrong." And when he comes <laughs> back, he's going to tell you you're wrong, and then I get to punch you in the face. <laughs> now, do you remember this? He took the bet. Oh, I, no, I remember the guy. I don't remember his name. No, the guy that I said his friend that uh, thought I was some douchebag hanger on because he's a fucking oh, because he was actor. a douchebag hanger on with the with yeah. The- he was his like friend. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll play security. Yeah. And I, so I said, no, that's a bet, though. If 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 you're wrong, I get to punch you in the face. I do know a bet's a bet, and you make sure people stand by that. Yeah, and uh, I can't remember if I... Somebody I, got punched in the face he, because he got I got a text. got punched in the face. Yeah. yeah, I got a text the next day that said, somebody I, got punched in the face. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure I just did it real soft. Like, like when I try to do it hard. I was going to say, you mean as hard as you can? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like when I punched Hack Oddity in the face because I thought he was fucking with me and it didn't really work. Remember when we took turns punching the door in your bedroom? <laughs> you don't remember that? Oh, <laughs> that's because well, I can't tell you. So I, 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 I had a, a, there was a domestic issue. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> that makes it sound worse than yeah, it really it, is. It really does. <laughs> And I was very upset at uh, at Bingo, and so I tried to those doors, my bedroom doors, like paper thin, hollow core, and I punched it as fucking hard as I could. Didn't leave a dent, so I punched it again. Didn't fucking do a thing. Did it open at least? <laughs> 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 Did someone answer it? <laughs> so I tell Chaley about this. I mean, uh, Chad, and uh, I go, come here. Punch this fucking door as hard as you can. Because I want to see if it's me. <laughs> and you fucking wailed on that door. <laughs> well, in the front it part. left had some it. knuckle marks. Because the front part. We didn't notice this till later. <laughs> The front part was almost metal. They had like a metal inside of it to where it left. You, I mean, it was pliable. I think it was a thin sheen of metal in the front hollow plaster, you know, a wooden door. But but it was light as shit. You were surprised too. It, it hurt. But then, 
But then later, but then when later we saw the on the deal. other side of the door, I hang my coats. And one time, I picked up a coat, and it was like a Kennedy exit wound. <laughs> 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 the other side of the door was shattered. <laughs> hey, uh, Shreveport was 2014 last gas tour, and it was the Phoenix Underground. Anytime it says underground, except for the comedy underground, it's a dance club. Our other guest. <laughs> I, I I was just putting out the usual spread that I always put out for all the podcasts with the uh, assortment of high priced cheeses and fancy crackers and fruit plates, like I always do. It has nothing to do with you, Kathy. I was waiting. Uh, I was I was waiting politely to have some caviar after everybody else did. Yeah, like I usually do. I no. usually uh, hold back. Yeah, I always put out a little tiny spoon for the uh, lumpfish caviar. Does that mean we can use the guest soaps in the little house? <laughs> uh, Catherine Bertine is my new best friend. Met her at... Uh, Tucson Airport when I was flying over to England, and we talked for about uh, oh, ten minutes. Yeah, that was that was the that was awesome meeting you there. Do you remember how that unfolded? I do remember how it unfolded because I was sitting there at the bar waiting for my flight, and a a guy stopped and went, "Oh man, I just saw you out of my periphery. I love your work. Whatever, can I get a picture with you?" And it wasn't just a guy. It was a black guy. Oh. It was a black guy with dreads. And when black guys recognize you and think you're cool, there is nothing better in the world. <laughs> and she took the picture for us. I did. I did. I When I was taking the photo, I noticed that, um, first of all, you were wearing this cream-colored suit, which was fabulous and it had a delta pin yes Actually, it of was course right and i you know being a stranger and i don't know you i couldn't figure out i'm like hell i don't think he's a pilot because he's drinking <laughs> <laughs> a lot <laughs> um but i was uh you know so i'm taking the picture and i noticed that from the collar of this tag is this tag hanging down and it's it was either like tj maxx or marshall's or goodwill Price tag? Or goodwill, goodwill. <laughs> goodwill. <laughs> like mini pearl and it's like just, mini pearl he's got a fucking yes. tag yep. hanging off yep. his jacket off yep. my he's shoulder the, yep. you know i think it was in the photo with the guy right <laughs> and i was just have having this moral conflict like okay do I tell this person that they've got this tag from Goodwill hanging down Funny. or do I not? You know, like, God, what would Gandhi do? You know, and, you know, eventually I was thinking about it and pretty sure that Gandhi would have been like, bitch, tell the guy's got a tag hanging down. You know, like be the fucking change. You know, it's like, okay, okay. And I knew that you were famous, but I was having a hard time placing face and all that was happening here. You know? I didn't know who you were. It's what you meant to were you talking to the black How guy? How do black people know you? That was not what I was thinking. <laughs> but it was, he also referenced, when he looked at you, he said Louis C.K. Oh. <laughs> right? Which is a huge turn on to the ladies. <laughs> but I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute. Well, I know that that's not Lucy Kay, and I'm confused. And eventually, oh. I figured out that he was referencing that you've done work with him in the yeah. past, right? But that's what kind of snapped me into this. I'm like, wait, I'm confused by all of this. Anyway, then we, um, you introduced yourself, and we started talking from there. And, and you were on your way to speak. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Bertine is a former skater, pro cyclist. Now an activist, uh, and you were doing a speaking engagement in Willi at William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, where I said, yep. where, where we have a friend that we talk about quite often. He's, let's say, he's stationed there. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, check in on our friend. He's running an open mic in the not guilty by reason of insanity ward. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, going well too. <laughs> only you didn't give me all of that information. You just gave me his name, and as soon as I googled his name, a different guy with that name popped up. Oh wow! Yeah, and it was like somebody who's in like a holistic medicine, and <laughs> like it was. I don't think it was the person. And then he might have a couple of different scams, right? right. <laughs> yeah, we're not sure. But then That's figure old. that out too. It was great. It was like you just kept giving these clues to all of these dynamic facets that you have. 
Uh, but we decided to be best friends mm -hmm. right away. And uh, so now we're best friends. <laughs> we are. We are besties for life. It's so awesome. It's uh, It's been so fun getting to know you and how authentic and... Well, awesome. I assumed that, A, you'd Google search me and that you are you told me you're, you're a speaker, not just a, an activist, but a feminist activist going to speak to college kids about equal wages and the et cetera. We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. So I figured you'd like find two clips at tops before you went, Oh, I can't be friends with this <laughs> fucking animal. I was just sitting here wondering which part of you she takes offense with as an activist. <laughs> none, none. I mean, it's for me, especially when you wear these like very public hats, like, Oh, an activist for equal rights, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, there's a lot of, you know, deep darkness that I harbor too. And Doug just speaks to that. It's great. <laughs> I, I, I call it impossible to argue with is yeah. the way I refer to it. This time will just have a way of putting things. You're like, hey, you're right. I don't know. I don't have any fucking rebuttal. Right. <laughs> Good exactly. job. I don't know. So wait, I could have hidden this deep darkness and like just ran marathons instead of fucking <laughs> drinking oh, oh, myself yeah. into a fucking oh, early so grave. Oh, you didn't have a bike. <laughs> so yeah, you just, holy shit. You totally just figured it out. Like, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why we do these endurance sports. You know, we're trying to vent. Uh, you've vent. endured every sport. Because <laughs> uh, I, I did. So I just got your your latest book today. Uh, uh, the road less taken. Sorry, yeah. But it's road less traveled is the yeah, famous it, one. So right. you've got to figure it out. Totally. Road less taken. Mm -hmm. Lessons of from a life of cycling, uh, but. Uh, just uh, briefly, you started out as a skater when you were a kid. You skated till you were 23, and then you go, all right, I'm not making the Olympics, so fucking <laughs> – I read where she, she said, well, it's either uh, I can coach and teach the new generation or I can join the fucking ice capades. <laughs> so oh, I ice did. skating? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought it was skateboarding. I'm like, this I don't think Olympics <laughs> has skateboarding. <laughs> You said skater. I was picturing her ripping up the half pipe yeah. as well. I don't know why. <laughs> Cranking a grind off the lip and then smoking a bowl. Yeah. All right. That's next. That's the next. Well, all right. Ice skate. <laughs> Got it. And you you, you wrote in uh, your, your second book that uh, when you were you were with the ice capades and then it was uh, holidays on ice. Where you had to dress up like an elephant. Yep. Ah, those, <laughs> those were the glory days for sure. Was yeah. that a weight gain thing? Or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so funny. I think probably because I was one of the more opinionated ones on the tour. They were just like, let's just shut her up and put her in the elephant costume. <laughs> I think that was definitely part of it. They also put me in a, a chicken costume. Well, technically it was a rooster. <laughs> and it had feet that you had like like fake feet that went over the skates, yeah. and that's like deadly. First of all, yeah, that sounds terrifying. Oh, yeah. uh, the toe, yeah, right, yeah. right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you got that like weird nubbin in the back of chicken legs. It's so oh, break. Uh, like you that. mean the break? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the. Was this for National like Geographic? Like, did you need right? the yeah. nub? <laughs> no, no, no. But costumes sewed it in for sure. I love it's like safety be damned. This fucking rooster outfit is going to be fucking exact. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. It's exactly they, how it was. When you quit, did they let you keep the uniform? No, no. In fact, they almost didn't let me quit because I didn't know this at the time. I was 23, right? And they they held on to our passports so that we couldn't escape. Oh, oh that's oh, some oh, human oh, trafficking oh, 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 oh. shit. Oh, where, right where, where, where was were you on a I, were you on a ship? I no. Were you giving <laughs> hand jobs to Robert Kraft because that's what they do the, on on cruises, on cruises they will take your passports or they you're not leaving. When that boat leaves port, you yeah. guys are going two or three miles offshore in international waters so people can gamble. And then when people come, like, especially the workers there, after a couple of nights, they're like, fuck this. But then they can't because they're in Macau or somewhere, right. you know? We were in, most of this tour happened in in Central and South America. So it was, I think oh, yeah. I was you in going anywhere. Chile or Argentina at the time. And, you know, I was so naive, too, at 23 that I just figured, oh, this is my employer and they want to hang on to my passport. Sure, here you go. <laughs> No idea. Fuck. But um, eventually, I got it back. 
And then, yeah, and, and get it back and did what? Went to Hollywood on Ice. Oh, that was Hollywood on Ice. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah where they so paid many. you an IOUs yeah. on Post-it notes. Yes, and held on to your passport, right? <laughs> that was uh, that was a journey for sure. So yeah. the rooster, was it part of like a, a, a cockfighting scene? <laughs> I'm trying to think why it had to be a rooster. No, I actually, I don't know. Oh, I do know. So that was on the holiday on Ice Tour, which was in Paris, and... Um, I was part of a Christmas show, and whoever wrote this Christmas show, whatever it was, the famous Jesus Chicken. Oh my god, I might have been. It was <laughs> old, old Saint Cock. Yeah. <laughs> whoever wrote it was definitely high. As I, I don't know, I mean, I've never actually seen any sort of public production or play ever written this way. It was so bizarre. And I've never was, seen a manger, but you'd assume chickens right. are around. Uh, <laughs> yeah, never staying represented. in the barn. Never represented. Yeah. It's yep. always goats and uh, livestock. It was crazy. And the chick had, or the chicken had a baby chick, <laughs> and chick. the baby chick was shot in this production <laughs> that was a Christmas show for children. By Monty middle. Python? I think so. <laughs> but like, I mean, it, was, it was unreal. That we was do it. not hold back the truce of life. <laughs> was it then the Shoot dinner? The like, was that Christmas dinner? Because that's okay. <laughs> you're, you're like, right. Was it like, did they <laughs> use it? Was it like... Gone to good use, right? Yeah. Yeah. Use every part of the chicken. Yeah. Then oh. Did they just dump a bunch of baby real Was baby Ted Nugent out? in this? <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe. I don't know. I was in the elephant costume. I couldn't see anything out the eye holes. Of that, so she's looking through the trunk, right? How, how do you much. how do you leave this gig quickly? Um, I think I only did it for about a year total. Oh, only, yeah, good, yeah. Good getting out of there. We've talked about. Yeah. I've, I've had a job that lasted an hour and a half that wasn't nearly that bad. I know. <laughs> only a year. But I had this determination, right? Because I thought, like, oh, getting to the pro ranks of skating, it was going to be awesome, and I would actually get to skate like a skater. And it, then it was not what it appeared to be. So. Uh, yeah, Nancy Kerrigan played an otter before she made the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close. Oh, it was close. But yeah, it definitely a segue. But you did that. get to skate every day. You got I did. you were in production. Yep. I mean there's there's a lot of positives to that. I mean the road is is like that. It yep. fucking sucks, but grinding it out, you end up getting something that you can't get by reading a book. Very or, true. Trying to make you feel good. No, you do. You are. You are. This is life experience. No, this is, totally is different, Chaley. This is where she had already realized she's at her peak in skating and oh, will not qualify yeah. for the Olympics. So now she figures at 23, if I play a chicken in Paris for a while, maybe that will get me back. It's like a desperate move. I got it. She saw John Travolta do Pulp Fiction and come back from obscurity, sure. <laughs> and maybe I could do that by wearing an elephant costume and being the last one trying to catch up with the line of skaters, and the one just can't catch up because <laughs> it's an elephant. Ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, that was exactly what happened. Uh, uh, the only elephant in the Church of Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... At this point, you switch gears that you got your uh, master's in something pointless, creative writing or something. <laughs> yep, uh, yeah, correct. Fine arts, it was, yes. I believe, at, at U of A here in Tucson. Yep. And then somehow you get a job with ESPN. I'm speeding this up because there's other shit I want to get to. You, you get a job writing for ESPN. And they say, hey, here's a goofy idea. It's 2006. You have two years to go out and try to make it into the Olympics in any sport mm -hmm. and write about that journey. Is that? That is exactly what So happens. take it from there. <laughs> See, I have notes. I'm like a real interviewer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so 2000, so I had this, uh, two year window to try to make the Olympics and, and I had zero direction from ESPN other than go try to do this. And so at first I thought, okay, well, let me try some of these quote unquote fringe sports that we don't know well in America, but are big, huge international sports like modern pentathlon or team handball or. Oh, this is summer. 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, Beijing 2008. Summer I was thinking Olympics. Skull or Luge or something. I know. Like, well, that's yeah. what they Archery? Like, everybody yeah, was one. writing into ESPN saying, you got to do the Luge. I'm like, that's not in the Summer Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't matter. I went there anyway to try the Luge because so many people, that sport kicked the shit out of me. It's amazing how hard Luge is. Wait, you did it? Oh, yeah. Shit. Oh, shit. I just threw something out there. That oh, I no. Know. Oh. I did because so many people wrote in, like, you got to try Well, you did the right? Luge in the summer? No, I went oh. in the winter. But it's on it sand. It was cold. You had a lot of free time. I had two years, so I went in the winter. I get scared watching the luge. I got I a lot know. of respect for you more right well, now. Skeletons oh. head first. Yeah. Right? yeah it, was, it was actually, luge is in some ways more technically difficult than skeleton. Because if you think about skeleton, even though you're head first, your, your shoulders and your center of gravity is your super. eyes your brain is right way, yeah but on luge you're on your back and you can't see properly right and, more, and, more and now your lower center body of gravity is totally different so i didn't know any of this of course but they sent me to try and i just figured oh this is going to be fine nothing bad's going to happen i work for espn la 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 does you know? luge does being able to see on the luge help you any more than if you had your eyes closed in a plane crash, <laughs> I, I can't imagine that you really have much control anyway. It's yeah. The control is so, um, so fine tuned. It's like if you're driving, you know, a hundred plus miles an hour. And if, even if you just uh, tilt the steering wheel in the tiniest way, you feel it in the car. Yeah. Right. So it's the same thing. If you just like, twitch your shoulder one direction that will send you flying into one side of the loose track which then pinballs you into the <gasps> other side and i came out of there with like wrecked knuckles like the, oversteering the, a turn oh, yeah. yeah like boom, whoa, boom. The i didn't but, know you could you steer have to rely on the feeling in order to to turn yourself anyway right I absolutely mean, you're like, oh wow right that. the risk the thing, for- the thing that's gonna fuck you up is the thing that's that you rely on to to yeah. But the risk reward on <laughs> oh, this, that. like the risk reward for like going face first versus like either you kill your brain and smash your face, mm. right? Like you don't get that much more for doing it head first, right? Like the, you just said, you're like, it's actually not that much better. So you're just risking decapitation for fun <laughs> when you don't really get much more control or it's it's pretty scary both sports skeleton and luge are equally scary i think but mm. you know you have to keep in mind it's not like there's a wall at the end that you're gonna necessarily no but if you mess up there's <laughs> a hundred of them all oh, right yeah, now. not gonna, yet you're gonna right, bounce not yet. back and you forth gotta, you not gotta yet. throw your chicken claw out real quick <laughs> exactly <laughs> I think whoever went face first the first time was just an asshole. Man, it, <laughs> like, it, it was might a fine have been sport. An accident, you know, like ooh, okay. So yep. now knowing that <laughs> yep. you do actually have control and steering, yep. when you learned what you learned from luge, do you kick the shit out of a water park? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can I say? I'm, I'm yeah. pretty Doing badass. Fucking full barrel rolls and stuff, <laughs> spinning around, going past fat kids. I mean, I can't, I can't lie. I'm, I'm, I'm going up good. over you, bitch. Laughing <laughs> <laughs> down at them. He's <laughs> ah! As a fat kid, that's not how gravity works. Fat kids will always be the first ones down. (laughs) I love that Doug knows what luge is, but somehow until just now, he didn't think there was any steering or any control at all. You just jumped on and you just shut your eyes and you got down to the bottom. Uh, Yes. A lot of Olympic sports, I think this is just... It's how it's genetic. I've done it. I've done it. uh, I'm not doing the bit. I'll tell you afterwards. I'm not going to... But yeah... (laughs) Fucking Michael Phelps is genetically built to f- swim faster. There's no room for guile or cunning or a, uh, you got a crafty plan how to beat him. No, if you're the fastest fucking fish, you're the fastest fish, and it's a, all dumb sports. And cycling we'll get to, too. I don't understand why you did that, why anyone <laughs> would do that, much less watch it, or why anyone would sponsor it, but it happens. <laughs> So you did people you, sponsor well, yeah, this podcast. <laughs> Pete, you did well, the they luge. Used to. You did the luge as a try. You did the luge as a try. I did. Yeah, I tried let's the get luge. Back then to this, what was the actual like Doug's gonna ask this? this is, what was the sport that you went in? Well, there's yeah, you had thirty two to choose from. Yeah. And yeah. So and you went with the ones that are where I don't uh, I don't know where you made the jump. Was yeah. this part of the original plan was you could do any sport to make the Olympics? Was the part 
that you could do it for any country part of the original plan or oh no we'll get okay. to that all right. part all right good all <laughs> but right first let's go through the sports that the you sp- tried right so um a, a number of those fr- fringe sports that i just mentioned and the luge didn't work out right but like our, uh, the handball, handball and the uh modern pentathlon these sports that we don't know so well in our country are actually incredibly popular throughout Europe and all the other continents, you know. So it was really, really difficult to try to qualify in any of these sports that I had absolutely no idea how to play. But <laughs> I did know how to ride a bicycle. And I had been doing triathletes prior. <laughs> Uh-oh. I had been doing triathlon. Either <laughs> 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 or. I blame all of you for that influence. Um, but yeah. Hand in hand. <laughs> so I was doing triathlon for many years as a triathlete. And um, cycling was my best discipline within swim, bike, run. So it made sense to me. Okay, why don't I try cycling? and see if I can get to the Olympics. By this time, there are only 18 months, technically almost less than that, uh, to try to qualify for the games. And I had to call up USA Cycling. And can you imagine being on the receiving end of this phone call, being like, hey, uh, so I'm this reporter, and I'm trying to get to the Olympics, and I'd like to do this in cycling, and how can I get there You know, in a year? And rather than actually laughing at me, uh, somebody very kind said, hey, well, here's the system. You start out in category four, try to get up to category one. If you get to national championships and you uh, place in the top three the year before the Olympics, so that would have been 2007. If you place in the top three, then you'll you'll be on, you know, the Olympic team. I was like, oh, okay, (laughs) that sounds crazy difficult to do. (laughs) And I'll shorten the story to the fact that um, I was actually able to get to race enough to get to the categories to go to national championships. I had strength on my side, but I didn't have tactics yet or any of the mental preparation that goes into cycling at that point. Um, but I did get to nationals in 2007. I was still so new to the game that strength couldn't get me to the line in the top three. And I finished in the middle of the pack. Um so roughly about 35th out of 75 women that were there. So I was like, oh, well, I guess that's it. I guess my Olympic journey is done. There aren't any more sports. I've tried everything possible. <laughs> and that must be it. And I went back to ESPN and they had this plan laid out. And they said, well, we never said that you had to get there for the United States. <laughs> and that's when things got a little bit crazy. And they said, you know, go see if you can try another, try another country. See if you can qualify for another country. How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> like, how can you just, like, I'm France now? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And it was... Uh, or let's... Uh, come on. France has a team. <laughs> we're, talking, <laughs> we're talking Uganda, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about, right? Was, African nation. It was Don't get of, ahead of yourself. It, <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I didn't read ahead. <laughs> no, no. It's so we, we um, you know, we being, like, the collective voices in my head, we're trying to figure out exactly what this this meant, but... What I didn't like How do about I this, marry a Ugandan? No, they don't, that doesn't even fly anymore, right? You can't even have that type of, yeah. of citizenship. Um, you have to qualify. And also, in just about every sport, at least back then, um, you can't just be part of a country and go to the Olympics. You still have to qualify within that sport, yeah. right? So the objective was, for me, was like, okay, here's what I'll try to do. I didn't like the assignment, though. I thought, like, I think that's really shitty to say, oh, I'm just going to push into some country. and and But it's the American way. Right. I know. Like, exactly. no way, no. like what I are you, like are you an American or not? Go get a medal from some other country. <laughs> right? <laughs> Manifest <laughs> destiny. Yes. <laughs> so true. That did not feel right to me at all. I was like, that's not okay. So I kept thinking, well, what would make it feel okay? And to me... Um, I felt like, what if I can build a federation, a cycling federation in that country that um, is specifically for women and for kids so that they can come up through the program. And when my time here is done with this assignment, like there are real bona fide athletes coming up through that country. But in the meantime, I'll qualify for the Olympics for this man. <laughs> <laughs> that was the assignment. Right? We broke right? Low, <laughs> so a uh, long story. Yeah, yeah. It's true. That was that was the thing. It's like that's the assignment. That's what I have to see if I can do. And so um I I, I, I yeah, yeah. the reason I know about a lot of this is because 
I read how what the assignment was and how kind of how it ended, but I didn't know a lot of details. But after I, I read the uh, excerpt from this book, As Good as Gold, on Amazon, and then, of course, being me, or uh, after I got done reading it, I'm going to look at the reviews. And you only had one one star. The only negative review you had was someone who was very upset that you would go living in America to another country where she was prepared to put her hand over her heart and sing their national anthem oh. where her bread and butter is here in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> And it was fucking hilarious <laughs> that someone was that upset. They were, oh, oh, Amazon reviews. It turns out it was somebody from was whatever country you went to that was what? just missed. <laughs> How oh, does that man. person find you? Wait, wait hang on. So, that's a dedicated that's, ass yeah. fan I'm right looking there. for something. Yeah. I, I let um, her get I'll to him. Because mm. she's the one who said she sent o- over three hundred letters. I'm, I'm, yeah, roughly. It yeah. was so to every fucking country. Go ahead. to every country that had a cycling federation. My first research was how many countries out there belong to the cycling federation. That could, wait, there's three hundred countries. About just about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Crazy. There were roughly a hundred and eighty. Um, countries that had a cycling federation. So that, that was the first step. Um, Which means someone has a program, if we, even it's yeah. only one city in that country, there's yeah, a, it's well, established. Exactly. It's almost like every sports federation has a, um, has a federation, right? Yeah. So name a sport and they have a worldwide federation. And if you're going to try to get to the Olympics, that sport has to have a federation. There's someone right. who picks up a phone and goes, well, this is what you need to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, the politics, of course, that would be its own, practically its own podcast. It's crazy. But the, the short answer being that we had, um, you know, about 180 cycling countries out there. Quick question. Were yep. there countries where you go, no, not North Korea? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was like, show me all the countries <laughs> that are out there. Yeah, you just want, you want to complete this a task, which is means yeah. you have to get on one. That's right. And the big part of that. No be- Muslim countries. I wore a chicken suit skating. I'm not wearing a burqa on a bike. <laughs> my hijab gets caught in my chain. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> That never crossed my mind. I had totally <laughs> forgotten about the chicken and the elephant by that. But it was it was nuts. There were so many countries actually that um, had a men's federation, but so many that didn't have a women's federation. And to me, that was the that was the key because I did not want to barge into a country that had a women's federation and be like, oh no no. I'm going to the Olympics for you. Like, that's not right. So I said, okay, I'm only going to email the countries that have a men's federation, not a women's, and then we'll build a program there for women. And so I sent out about 185 emails. Out of 300, it it boiled down to 180 immediately because you crossed those other ones off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's not enough countries had a women's federation. Yeah. That's that's an issue in itself, right? So I just sent out all these emails and back then I was I was still on AOL and I don't know how many of those emails I'm actually. I'm still on Hotmail. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. It was out there and a lot of them were no response at all. Um, some were countries that just wrote back kind of laughing. You know? Were there any that were like, yes, but only with tandem bikes so you can put a man on the back to ride with them? <laughs> <laughs> That's look, kind look of this how it America. Goes. We want to win. We want to win. If you're going to bring you in, we need a man. Oh my God, that's totally how it felt. Your on thighs won't make it level. up our hills. <laughs> you Americans, right? Well, fast forward to the country that actually saw this email and said, "You know what? I get it." I was also very honest. I was like, "Look, here's what I'm doing. This is an assignment. I'm with ESPN, but I've." Fucking love cycling. I didn't put that in there, but I was like, I really <laughs> love cycling. You know, and I, the sport. So you were whole- up front in the beginning saying, I yeah. am on assignment. So it wasn't, yes. you weren't catfishing or. No, exactly. Yeah. I was very upfront, but I also said, Hey, you know, but here are my, my results, my race results. So I kind of have something going here. I'm not just like a 
total, you know, wash. This yeah. there's yeah. something here. Bona yeah. fides, I think. They yeah, call it. yeah. Right. I'm not a I'm not a goofy back page story. Exactly. Well, I have, yeah. <laughs> I, I got credentials. Maybe a little. This isn't for my new zine. <laughs> no. I'm starting. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Pulls off the breakaway suit and it's like all right. <laughs> An agenda. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the fabulous country of Saint Kitts and Nevis, which is in the Caribbean. Oh, Saint Kitts and Nevis. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you just happened to have to train in a tropical <laughs> destination. <laughs> it was actually most of the training I did was was in the states. Um, oh, <laughs> of course, you wanted to win. Is no, Nevis <laughs> like the Garfunkel of Saint Kitts? <laughs> uh, Nevis. They can only bike around Saint Kitts say, of Visa so many times. <laughs> the Everybody whole said. island is a velodrome. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It was because the island of Nevis is quite small, and the paved road around was um, a, a little bit less than, than 25 miles. So it was like a, you know, it did feel like a velodrome in that setting, mm-hmm. um, which is why I did a lot of training back in the States. But long story short, it, um, you know, the, the request for citizen, citizenship wasn't just like the cycling federation, like here, here's a paper license. Here you go. You know, it actually had to be, I was granted dual citizenship by the government to race for, for them. And it was um, something I decided if this ever happens, then no matter what happens with this journalism assignment, no matter where I go in the sport of cycling, I will always represent St. Kitts and Nevis. Cause I'm not going to just swoop in and do something and then bail. I didn't think that was right. I mean, fuck, you can always go to St. Kitts as a <laughs> citizen. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, it it's was... a way out of this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Why I, are you still here, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes... Have you been paying attention to what's going on? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I ask myself that every day. I know. I know. It's it's in the works. It's in the plan. But uh, following that, so I, I'll give you the spoiler alert that um, – by the time I got the citizenship and I uh, was able to get into some races, um, time had pretty much run out. And I was still so new to the sport that I didn't make it. Can you imagine that after like a year, I didn't make it to the Olympics? Oh, uh, uh, I know. Wait, the did, thing is rigged. The, the country itself didn't make it. Correct. Because uh, I... you have to qualify I as would, a country. Exactly. To, right. I would have had to qualify St. Kitts and Nevis for a birth to the Olympics in cycling. And what I did find out, though, and this is where it kind of turns the corner into activism, is how many of those rules were really, really antiquated and backdated, um, not just for St. Kitts and Nevis, but for any of these smaller countries that might not have had the finances to send athletes around. Um, all of the qualifying races were in Europe, or maybe a few over here, over there, but there were no qualifying races. Huge in the dollars. You never- exactly, oh. right? And yeah, multiple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Right, exactly. And what's really sad about that is when we think about how many amazing incredible athletes are out there, but they can't show what they have because the infrastructure is broken. That was one of the, th- the big things. The other thing was how cycling treated women in the sport. Again, one of these really, really old school sports has been around for, you know, hundreds of years, hundreds of years, or at least over a hundred. And, uh, it was so steeped in this tradition where they were only letting men race certain events. Women weren't even invited to certain races. Um, and if they were, if we were invited, we were only able to race half the distance. The prize money was pennies on the dollar. And on top of that, you got money. Well, if you win, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. right? But, but at the professional ranks, and we're talking about like, you know, in the NHL and in NBA and football, you've got major and minor leagues, right? So I'm talking about even at the most major, major league in cycling, women were still not deemed worthy enough to receive a base salary. So. Okay. Uh, let me ask, cause uh, yeah. this is probably the most common. First of all, uh, when it comes to professional cycling versus Olympics, like Olympics, they don't really give you shit, right? You're just out there doing car washes and lemonade stands. Yeah. And between it's, skis down the slope. Yeah. A lot of um, individual athletes, if they're, if they're metal potential, they might have private sponsors or personal sponsors that come in and are able to back their careers. Like Phelps. Or right, someone's right. Like exactly. in the media. You're not making money in the Olympics, oh, but correct. on the professional circuit. Yep. How much of it comes down to 
how much people fucking pay to see it or like Great with question. college college you know college mm-hmm. football is paying for all the fucking field hockey and you know exactly girls cripple ball or whatever the fuck they play on <laughs> <laughs> the other unattended sports it's it's true it's it's all part of that crazy machine like you know the the chicken and egg or who's gonna disrupt that cycle so basically what's interesting about cycling is that the athletes at that pro level for women and being pro means you are actually on a team and you're paid to race. Um, and a lot of the, the backward thinking there is that we are still not allowed access to so many of these races where there are televised, um, there's televised or, you know, live stream coverage in some way. And the Federation is, is, is kind of dropping the curtain on us, not actually including the women. The same. As a me being a, a stand up comic that works for nobody, I have no sponsors, I don't have a network awesome. I work for. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I always think of okay, if you, male or female, are another comic that's not making as much money, it's because not as many people want to pay that much to see you, right. So how is it different? That's accurate. I can say that. That's accurate. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Even on this tour, right. that's incredibly accurate. <laughs> great, great point. And in um, cycling's biggest area of, of exposure and popularity is Europe. That's a huge area where it's big. And people oh, do. Oh, they're into every boring sport oh. over there. It's true. <laughs> they do pay over there to watch cycling or to be connected with cycling. And the sponsors pay for the visibility that the cyclists carry, you know, so there is an actual demand for it, but we're only seeing that kind of demand if it's actually shown. Yeah. Right. Know. So if you don't get the TV coverage. Right. So if we're not getting the TV coverage, then how are we able to share a piece of that pie? And I can tell you, because I've been in that sport and I did race professionally for five years, um, the women are so freaking badass. Like watching them compete it, it's fast it's amazing it's not like some dumbed down version you know but the, the assumption is that no one wants to watch it just like it's the same thing with women in comedy right like right. no one wants to see them so the assumption is we won't give them airtime because no one will watch it and no, it's we'll- not no one wants to see them no one's tuning in i mean there's a right. there's a there's a you have to hit a demographic and you have to the t- tv has to turn on for yes. the, them to the, the the station to actually make it worthwhile, right? But if you, I mean, we're talking cycling pants and women, so like oh, I think if you yeah. just give it a well, shot, like there's still a shallow society oh, here. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> way to find an <laughs> angle, Madison. I, I, no. I find it I find it interesting that you talk like how this avail- is unavailable to women, and this the whole thing is new to me. So I'm thinking like even in this country. A lot of poor people don't know you can make money riding a bicycle. I grew up with a lot of people who all they knew how to do was ride a bicycle. Right. Like, it seems like you would have more, like, if I could, I'll just do this better. I'm dumb as fuck, but I can ride a yep, bicycle. Sure. Like, if people knew, they don't teach that at Job Corps. Well, when she was talking about that, where she realized <laughs> she had the strength, but she didn't know tactics and stuff, I always thought, well, for any sport you watch, there's someone that doesn't do it that's better than the best that does do it. UFC. There's probably a million guys that could probably walk in that ring and kick the shit out of someone, but that's probably wrong. Because, <laughs> but I've I've always been in that mindset. Yeah, okay, you, you box, but that's because you you had the opportunity. There's yeah. probably some guy in a bar right now. I know it works with. Uh, Chicks, people, magazines, 50 most beautiful people. There's bars I go into. There's 50 better looking people than the people in that fucking magazine. They're just not in that business. But that's probably different. It's probably a terrible point. Go ahead. (laughs) Follow that terrible point. (laughs) Well, you know, uh, it does come down to exposure, like we've talked about for sure. And uh, the right media packaging of that stuff and i can tell you that the women that um that i raced with and they're still racing they have really interesting personalities it's not just like that they're which an- just don't show up on a bicycle right. <laughs> you, can, you can call them ugly on this podcast we're, we're real here we don't sugar no wait shit. they're beautiful they're awesome they're incredible <laughs> 
incredible, you know, in all regard. It's it's pretty cool, but they also have um, so – they carry interesting stories with them too. So it's kind of this – if you're into sports, you know, we like athletes who win, yes, but we also, also like athletes who have a personality, and that's where we're sitting on this untapped gold mine of amazing athletes who are, we can't see. You're talking about women cycling in this uh, St. Uh, oh, I'm talking about women cycling everywhere. Okay, but, yeah. but what my question, what I was wondering too yeah. is like you started in this thing and you started a cycling program where there wasn't one for women. Is that still, are there young women who can get the fuck out of there? I don't know if it's nicer yeah. than here, but I mean, are there people who can up, we did. Your program we there. did. And there's a really great Arizona connection to that too, because um when I came back from the the Olympic assignment, you know, and wanted to make good on this promise of saying, hey, we need to get more stuff down there. They don't have enough bicycles. Uh they had a youth program, but you know, on an island something breaks. It, you wait a long time for something to get fixed, right? So I yeah, put as out, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Cuba, they're still driving around nineteen fifties Cadillacs or <laughs> Chevys. <crazy>. Yeah. <laughs> Haiti, they're still trying to get rid of Sean Penn. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> we we put out word about what we're doing. Saying, hey, uh, can people in Arizona or anywhere donate um, anything? Gear, bikes, everything. And within a week, we had something like 800 pounds of equipment that we were able to send down there. And there was a federation in place that had just started, you know, um, a youth program. So now there was a true upward trajectory of where it was going and there were there were young women getting into the program so in 2009 that was a year after the 2008 i didn't make it to the games but we were able to hold our first national championships there and from there some of those young men and women actually from their finishing they then gained those those elusive points that were needed to collect for the next potential oh, Olympics. Right nice. So, look, if that's yeah, yeah. if you know, and if that's just me, if that's just one person being able to do that, like we can all do that, right? What, what's the name of the cartel that runs that uh, <laughs> cycling program now? <laughs> <laughs> the two Escobars reference thirty for thirty ESPN. Yeah. Over here. Over Once here. they discovered it was profitable and <laughs> yeah. manageable, who took it over? <laughs> so, uh, but that uh, is this the same foundation, or this is your new foundation? This is a new foundation. This is a new one. This is what she's, I was trying to. Yeah, yeah, no, I was going somewhere. I know oh, home stretch, oh, but ahead. I know that that wasn't around in 2009. Yeah. It has nothing to do with kids. You worked with, she basically does what a lot of us do in comedy is, uh, yeah, try to house broke ass <laughs> comics when they're driving from <laughs> LA. <laughs> To Austin, yeah, you can stay stay a few nights, and we'll cook you some food because you you ain't got shit, and you're living out of your car trying to follow your dream, yes. and that's what you do with home stretch with bicyclists, female bicyclists who are trying the inevitable. Yeah, I mean the in in in, in the the the, the uh, not, not that's not the word. <laughs> See, this no. is what happens when I don't yeah. smoke on a podcast. <laughs> I'll blame that. No, you got it. You that's unattainable. It that's what I was looking for. Yeah, you help out. Yep, we are. Tell, go through some of your brokest moments oh. trying to make it as a cyclist. Oh, my God. Mine personally, um, ooh, I had Start a lot. Start with fucking Harvey Weinstein. Wait, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, you well, should I have could, a cigarette. <laughs> 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 I can definitely say that from uh, from the time. So okay, I spent. Uh, hang on, Chris, Kristen Becker will match you comedy for bicycling. Oh, the fucking brokest, <laughs> starving right. artist, starving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sign me up. I'm that kid. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. You can stay at home stretch anytime you like. Yes, yes. I have a bike. Awesome. <laughs> Man, I so I spent five years at the pro level, and and only one of those years was I paid above the poverty line. Mm -hmm. And the poverty line is like, you know, $18,000. So all the other years, and the men, of course, had a guaranteed base salary. And I thought, this has to change. This isn't, this isn't okay. And we have to make that change from within our sport. So um, uh, my business partner and I decided, like, okay, let's do this. Let's find a residence in Tucson, which is where everybody goes to train. If you're a pro cyclist and you live in the States because of Tucson's um, uh, mountains and the, the climate, climate, everything, right? That's where everyone goes for at least six months out of the year. So I said, we get, we've got to do it in Tucson. And, um, 
you know, housed anywhere from eight to 10 athletes, but not sandwiched in like kids at a day camp type thing, right. you know, actually like a livable place. And we won't charge any rent. They have to be a pro cyclist who has qualified to that level already, or might be just on the cusp of earning that first pro contract. And, um, I know from, you know, from my time there, what really turned the corner for me was probably the second to last year of my career. Like I needed that personally too, because I fell into one of those places where I had to work two jobs in addition to the pro cycling career, um, which I wouldn't have had to work so many jobs if the women had the same base salary as the men. I could have at least survived. So the men weren't having to take jobs. Correct. Mm -hmm. They They could live. On the yeah. You know, come to think of it, Sanhope used to do that for uh, shitty baseball players that would come to town. Yeah. And they were all <laughs> men, too. He didn't have any female $25 baseball players. And, player. and right. for the record, when they asked me for advice how to get baseball actually going here where people would watch it, I said, get a chick on the team. This is a heavy gay community. <laughs> get a chick on the team and lesbians will come out and fucking support it. Women, <laughs> but mostly yeah. lesbians. Mostly. Because most women don't watch WNBA. <laughs> But lesbians will. I think that's a great idea. We'll, rec- we'll record it. Right? And with how many- <laughs> the closest thing we have to lesbian baseball here is Castle Rock Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, he's not in here. Ah, way fun. That joke is only for Kenny. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, I was hoping you'd like match like worst places you had to crash on the road. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh um, uh, I can give you the Dumps almost ran out of money. We it was like when the gas prices went up. We were in the tour, and I had a touring van that was you know a ninety two, and it was old and crunky, and like two gigs just cranked like just shit the bed. And we got to California, and gas was four dollars a gallon, oh. and like literally me and it was Dykes of Hazard and two other lesbians who were like pulling up the carpet in the van just trying to find fucking coins to get to LA Aww. it was the fucking worst and then like when you have like three lesbians in a van like who's gonna give the blowjob do you know what I mean like <laughs> how do you get out of this fucking situation oh my God. because there's a way out for like a lady like yourself you'd be able to like <laughs> get yourself out of that situation but mine's not right mine's definitely not as cool as that What's but that? I, my, I wish I could say mine was as cool as that. Oh, that's we, cool. We, I think so. <laughs> I do. I, one of the ones that we had, you know, we were on these pro teams, but we, again, the whole salary thing and the teams are not even paying for hotel rooms, right? For us. And we were in California and the race, um, that we were going to had a homestay program, which means locals would take in one or two athletes from each team and, you know, put you up in a guest room, right? Yeah. So my teammate and I went to this one house and they, the loveliest couple, two young kids kids like four-year-old and a baby and they're like we'll keep the kids in our room and you can have the kids room and i walk in there and the bed is a four-year-old's pirate ship bed yes that's <laughs> can i say it that one and i'm sitting there and you know and it's the, it's all decked out with pirates of the caribbean there's this comforter with like johnny depp you know jack sparrowing and doing his thing Ew. and i have to like climb I into this bed and my limbs don't fit they're like port and starboard <laughs> jetting off in each direction and you know and i'm supposed to race professionally like be a pro athlete it's like sleeping in this bed yeah you know? yeah but you're trying to put it in this like special place of denial and be like, no, no, I got this. You know, yeah, but this would be the difference <laughs> if it was a comedian in a pirate ship bed. It helps your career because yeah. you have a new five minutes the next day. And yeah, if there's no okay. roaches, I'm in. Like, okay. You're worried about you the sheets. Oh, oh, <laughs> and if oh. she was a cyclist, she wouldn't be fucking sucking dick for gas money. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, right, right. Right. I, was, I was gonna say, no, no I'd be doing it for fun. So suck a dick for the better room, and I don't see cyclists <laughs> sucking a dick for the better room. All right, let's go. <laughs> well, no comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I because we we are getting close to show. Do we do have a show in an hour? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we. Yeah. We are, we're eight minutes away. Yeah, I got I, I got something I really want to bring up uh, because, and I, I want to say that when we became best friends, and I do, that we are best friends now. I, we are. I, I, I might say some things when I'm drinking, but I'll stand by them. Uh, <laughs> I ha- I did have a, an ulterior motive the more I talked to you because even Bingo said today when I, I was bringing out ginger beer for you. In a small bucket of ice, like I do for all our guests, every podcast, every week. <laughs> every time. She goes, is this for Val? 
And I go, no, it's for Catherine. She goes, is Catherine Val? Are you fucking with me? Because you're very, <laughs> our friend Val, who's been on the podcast, she has her own project, the Florence Project. Uh, you're so similar. And uh, you being a professional athlete, I thought, eh, there's a good chance you might be gay. And uh, maybe Val, <laughs> and you being very similar people with very similar passions, maybe you'd make a good couple. And you went out for coffee and... Says you're, you're, you're not a gay. Where, where, where's Val? Wait. <laughs> well, I was like, I don't understand why I'm here. Yeah, you're not kidding. You went out for coffee with Val and you're not gay yeah. yet? I know. <laughs> That's That's odd. Conversely, <sighs> I have a pretty Kristen good. Becker is not a professional athlete, but happens to be surprised. a professional lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, since you were both on, uh, I, I wanted to ask you uh, how you feel, and uh, I was uh, about uh, uh, transgender in sports. I'm all for it. Yeah, oh no! I mean, yeah, I mean, yes. that's a big yes. question. Yeah. 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 No, in cycling, specific. if yeah, you we, were a cyclist yep. and a man transitioning into a woman, but could still like yes. keep up with Lance Armstrong without the juice. So mm. I've raced with transgender athletes and um, I think that they're amazing athletes. And I also think that there's this common misperception that, that every transgender athlete is just going to throw the hammer down and beat every woman. And that's actually not what's happening. And the transgender athletes, especially in, at least I know this in cycling, right? They have to be tested for their hormone levels and they have to be under a certain percentage uh, to of Did testosterone, I yeah, know that to either. qualify as um, as female in the competitive sense, ah, right? right? So, and then I had I also had this one fantastic experience racing. I told you this was going to be very feminist. We were going to learn something. <laughs> I, we just I, did. The, the only insight I have on this conversation is from because I when I used to watch a UFC and I would be they would had the same conversation and it was so extreme though because I'm like yeah that's a dude is a, a still you're still going to have the muscle and I don't know how if that's different in cycling or if I wonder if they're also tested for their hormone yeah, levels and regulation. I, a lot of them look a lot. Uh, like dudes it's i wonder possible. if Catherine bertine had a different opinion till she beat a trans person in cycling like, <laughs> okay, they, they, they're fine they're fine i won <laughs> i had this one race where and in cycling it's very typical to crash there are crashes that happen and if oh, you shit we gotta get oh. to your tbi fuck oh yeah i fell on my head <laughs> well, no, finish, finish. okay short story with that and i um if a crash happens in the middle of the pack, we call it a peloton. That's the group of the riders, right? If somebody crashes in the middle, then we you call it the fun part. The fun. <laughs> <laughs> we call it why we watch. Finally. <laughs> so, so if you're if you're log jammed behind that crash, then you have to chase like with all your strength to get back to the group that has you know carried on up the road. Mm. So in one of those situations, I was um, trying to get back to the main Peloton with a transgender athlete, another woman, myself, is the three of us trying desperately hard to get back. And I, I watched how hard she was working. She was going her full limit. And so was I. And so was the other woman that was with us. And it was a really beautiful moment for me to be like, look, she's not just sitting here like coasting along like, oh, this is easy. Sure. Like she was kicking her ass like we were all kicking our own sure. ass. And that really solidified for me. Like, OK. And then she went on. This is a race of, let's say, um, round numbers. It was 100 people. And she finished, I think, like 24th. Right. So it, she wasn't like there's that misconception. People are going to be like, to, to me, that's a small, that's, road. that's the wrong sample group. That's a, cause like a, <laughs> a weak ass dude is going to be a weak ass woman on the same bicycle ride, no matter which gender they choose. You would have to have the strongest woman and the strongest transgender man race and see how they compared. Uh, I don't know, maybe not. Didn't like yeah, Billie Jean King already deal with this? Mm. Yeah. Like, wasn't that, like, didn't we fucking deal yep. with this like a while yep. ago? <laughs> yeah. And that's it. We're still, it's like we're. Well, it's because there's biological now. differences, is my point. And there, there's, uh, you know, you can't, you can't ignore that. And when you're doing a competition, I would. But how have those biological differences been framed for us, right? Like, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like there's definitely, there has been lack of opportunity, right? For, yeah. for women. And yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just. 
<laughs> if it means not- more people get to go make money bicycling, I'm definitely all for it. I don't have an opinion one way or the other on the whole thing. You- I was just curious as how it would be. Got what like Icarus, where Russia did oh. a bunch of fucking yep. uh, shady shit oh, for a yeah, whole bunch of years yeah. on bicycling and. Like, oh, shit, yeah, shit we didn't even get on. into Lance Armstrong oh. shit. Could the but, future, but could the future of cycling be non-gendered races where like men and women race each other the same distance uh, on the same routes at the same time? You know, it would be an interesting thing to see. I mean, that has to happen in sport where men and women are racing the same distances just just because that should be how it is. It's that way in all the other sports. Why isn't it that way in cycling? But with the transgendered side of it, um, I think that's just one of these areas where I think a lot of people are projecting the, the fear like that oh Uh all of these men are going to transgender to women and Uh come over and kick everybody's ass and it's just Uh not happening but I'm on this thing of like why are we gendering something like riding a bike like like why can't there just be a race and if everyone has a bicycle and you've trained and you want to get on it then you do it instead of separating it well I guess I feel I I like that there are different um uh classifications classifications thank you in the sport because Right now, I think that that is something that highlights what the women can do well and what the men can do well. But what's interesting is that the longer a sport gets, whether it's running or cycling or anything in the endurance family, women actually show that they excel more at greater distances. Mm -hmm. So it might be really interesting. Having balls has to be a disadvantage in bicycling over long distances, I would definitely think. Now I have a a, a few questions because I wanted to segue back from uh, Chaley's opening sizzler story. I know, I know, I know runners often shit their pants. Have you, have you shit those, uh, those bicycle, what do you so call far, those? Singlets? Oh, we call them um, chamois. Snug bugs. Snug bugs. <laughs> <It's, Snug laughs> they call them the chamois because they absorb a lot of shit. <laughs> Pretty much, they absorb a lot of stuff. It's very, very common for cyclists, both men and women, to urinate during a race because they have to. I said shit. We're talking I, oh, about oh. shit right now. Yeah, yeah. In, no we're doubt. I gotta, wait, it. where does the pee go? Let's wait. Where does the pee go? It goes into the chamois. Okay. Okay. Wait, your leg. where are you? Right. If you're behind her, it's hitting you. Right. Yeah, that it's is hitting true. those spokes and those okay. wheels, and All it's right. flipping up. It's like but wacky races. It has to be done, you know. Because the glasses hydrate. make more sense it's now. Go somewhere. Smoke screen, smoke there screen. Are ways. There are ways. Throw it on the tax. But for Muttly. for shitting, um, I haven't had it happen. But I mean, if you're out there and you have some serious bowel stuff going on, yeah, you either have to go. You're going to write that in there on the bike. But I think that... The or hide times, behind a bush. Or yeah, basically. And that's what I've seen more people Lose take. time. You know, at least and, then they, and then all of a thing. sudden, she's not complaining about TV coverage. Yeah. <laughs> how many times... True. How many times did you shit in an elephant costume? None. Okay. None. Right. I'm not, sure that was going to be it. None that I'll share with you anyway. But no, that, that never uh, happened. That show was an hour long. So, you know. I don't know your okay. diet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks bingo yeah it's, it's too late to get in i had other notes about your uh your your uh your uh, falling on my head no your trying to change She's alcoholics active. which is so oh. off topic but you, you mentioned that and as good as it gets but that's uh, I I'm I I I don't know why I can change every gear chain brake thing on a bicycle, but I can't change an alcoholic boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about you were oh, it was a, I, I had to do it, some deep it was diving. A, it was yep. a it was a, remember, a, a yes, relationship yes, that yep. went south in Boulder, Colorado. Yes. So you couldn't stomach the thought of going back to Boulder and this is when you moved to Arizona. Right, you couldn't right. do New York. And but no, I think where I was going with that was that like I I, and he was an alcoholic and was like, well, shit, I know that you can't change somebody. Yo, you take a bike apart and put it back together in front of a lesbian, I, she'll quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, if you're striking out, <laughs> you have options. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. That is so awesome. I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> you need a wrench? That, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. The, 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 the point is, we don't have time to get right. into a bunch of the notes. Okay. But your foundation is the Home Stretch Foundation. Dot org. Dot org, yep. Which, bingo, do, do you even know the brand of that bike? So, explain the bicycle that bingo. Oh, the, the trike. The trike, yeah. That yeah. is so fantastic. Can we talk about what yeah. we'd like to do with the trike? Yeah, well, <laughs> bingo bought this. 
as we all buy something that's going to change our lives. <laughs> yeah, I bought an AMC Pacer that allegedly had only 4,000 original miles. Yeah, you spend a lot of money sometimes on dumb shit and you never use it again. Bingo had this beautiful <coughs> tricycle. I don't even know. No, it no, looks, no, no, no. It's not a, a tricycle. It's a recumbent. Yeah, it's, it's a recumbent, recumbent trike, it's which means just three trike. wheeled. It's yeah. three wheeled and it's a recumbent and it's awesome. This thing has disc brakes, SRAM shifting, and it's carbon fiber. Like, this is a serious trike. It's awesome. It's pretty funny. Bingo was about to say the same thing describing it. <laughs> Hers was going to be, it's orange. It's orange. I remember when she and texted me about the SRAM brakes. That's right. <laughs> Are these worth it, Chad? Are these worth it? Do I do the upgrade to the SRAM? So it's a very expensive unit. And after a while, so you did take it, uh, that the whole airport road we went down to uh, the – golf course she got to the end of that and then called andrew to drive her back up because it's kind of uphill the way back mm -hmm. and it's sat here and it's beautiful and we've tried to sell it and there's not a real market for it down here uh, the, what it costs is probably the annual income of most of my friends on <laughs> selling weed or <laughs> ssdi <laughs> do, 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 do. so bingo has donated it to Home Stretch Foundation. Oh, right oh, Bingo, you are the best. Thank you so much. So great. And you will auction it off. We'll, we'll keep you updated on yeah. the podcast and you through your bicycling Absolutely. connections. Absolutely. We are going to auction off the fabulous trike that Bingo has donated. Oh, no. and, uh, and that will help... Uh, your all your people, poor bicyclists, <laughs> all your all your broke comics trying to get ahead in the world to get a, a free lunch and not have to blow someone out of because there's no change in the carpet. That's an analogy to what unless they want a top bunk. We are very thankful for that. Uh, is that you? Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah. Well, you, I, I've blown past this. Who's you? Who's you? Oh, Kristen Becker. Okay, yeah. Kristen, I because I, I I know you both do activism, and I heard you outside before the podcast going, yeah, this tour, I just want to tell fucking jokes. I'm oh no, no. activism for a <laughs> no, second. No, no, to, no, 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 no. no I, mean, I mean for a moment, but yeah, yeah. I, 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 then I glossed over because you have a you're going to be here tomorrow. Yeah, I'll we'll crank out another podcast with you. Okay, Look at that. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Because, <laughs> yeah, but plug your, <laughs> plug, your <laughs> yeah, up dates. Like, plug your upcoming dates. I don't know what he has up there. Uh, that's a that's May second. That's a fundraiser for Summer of Sass. Uh, the Stonewall Inn's doing a big uh, build up to the anniversary of the oh, riots. The, the, yeah, the, yeah, the gay so, bar in New York. Yeah, and All so right. we're doing a fundraiser for Summer of Sass and a, a project called the Generations Project. It's and not a gay bar in New York. It's a uh, it was a turning point. It is point. a gay bar it, in New York. Oh, it still is. Yeah. Okay. Well, for people who just think I'm. It's not a benefit for, well, it's... No, it's a benefit for yeah. these two uh, organizations. Mine works with uh, LGBTQ kids that are 18 to 20, and then the Generations Project works on uh, saving stories of older queer folks. And so... Yeah, I didn't want my people to think I'm just trying to, like, build an addition on a gay bar to Stonewall. No, <laughs> Stonewall was a big turning point in gay rights uh, history. It was a riot yeah. and police fucking raid, awful, horrible shit. So yes, yeah. Uh, so we started the uh, the feel good cabaret, and so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do these events in New York and try to raise money, and we're trying to buy a house for uh, for the program. But we can talk about all that. Right on. Yeah, that's amazing. Look. Good for you. Thanks. It's really important. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Also, Doug, uh, we do have uh, sponsors up from the GCBL, the Girls Cripple Ball League, the BisbeeBleeders dot com, <laughs> and the the. the uh, GimpGals.net. <laughs> Gimp Gals! Find out about those teams. Sponsor them as best you can. The GCBL, the new sponsors of the Doug Stanton Park. Kenny, our driver, is waiting in the... Oh, he, he's, yeah, he's waiting in the Suburban to take us to uh, the second night of comedy at uh, Chuckleheads 
chuckleheadsaz.com coming up after this podcast Brendan Burns check out oh Burns is booked I didn't even know it's that it's a one nighter right. so it's chuckleheadsaz.com go there to check out the dates and uh yeah a lot of those shows I think I'll be back for I think a lot of May I'm gonna just be working like middle week so I, I'm gonna I'll be there for a lot of them so come down to Bisbee hang out and uh enjoy our town enjoy chuckleheads enjoy the podcast thank you Catherine Bertine my new best friend sorry <laughs> All my old best friends <laughs> were very angry. Chaley is hurt. Chad Shank never wanted a friend because he doesn't want to let anyone down. Uh, <laughs> Chad left. He went uh, to the gas station. I, I appreciate all the knowledge that I got uh, tonight uh, from you ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Krista Thanks. Becker. I love you. you. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Cigarettes. <laughs> Check your mic, Doug. Check test. Yeah. Hello. Thank you. Hello. I don't know where all my Hello. fucking reading glasses went. I used to have a thousand, and this is. Uh, the are one there I any down find. down there? Like in the. I don't. I don't need anyone. Uh, oh, you have some on your face. I know. I'm okay. Saying, I had to like, <laughs> go on a deep search to find them. That, that he doesn't even feel across his nose now. <laughs> <laughs> Time for that prescription to be retaken. Oh, air. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. I already did a floor noise, so. <laughs> I don't remember saying it, but evidently when Kenny was dying on his ass on stage in here, I go, yeah, Chaley will use that for room tone. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, Kenny. I've never gotten five minutes of room tone. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> Even the crickets shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Kenny is getting laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I, everybody looked at Kenny. I turned around and looked to see who was in here laughing. <laughs> what the fuck are these people? <laughs>